The Ahsoka series teaser was shown during Star Wars Celebration in London, England. It was released for the general public. All I have to say is, wow! I generally try to stay away from trailers, but I just couldn't help myself this time. After all, Ahsoka Tano is my favorite light side character. I say light side and not Jedi for a reason. Let's get into how this may have changed. The Jedi Order had very strict rules as to who is and isn't allowed in their ranks. Duh! For a Jedi Padawan to advance to the rank of Jedi Knight, they must go through a series of Jedi trials. Ahsoka Tano went through her trials during the Clone Wars and left the Order when her trials were over. With good reason. The freaking Jedi threw her to the wolves and were going to allow her to be executed by the Republic. But after Ahsoka left the Jedi Order, she became the embodiment of what the Jedi should have been. The Ahsoka trailer was just released a couple days ago at Star Wars Celebration, and though it looks amazing, it can actually change the character of Ahsoka Tano in a major way. Not in a bad way at all. Ahsoka Tano's allegiance doesn't really matter, and though we have seen her deny being a Jedi, there's new evidence that she may actually be one in the timeline of The Mandalorian. It can be confusing. That is, until the Ahsoka series comes out and hopefully clears some of it up. And, like any of my theories, I don't think this is the only possibility. It isn't my way or the highway. It's just a possibility. But for now, let's have fun with it. And the question is, drumroll please. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah, that's my best drumroll. Is Ahsoka Tano a Jedi in the Mandalorian timeline? Before anyone gets all huffy and puffy, hear me out. And please watch the whole video before you comment. Ahsoka Tano was the Padawan to Anakin Skywalker during the Clone Wars. Again, duh. But during her time as his Padawan, the snippy teen was accused of murder and treason by the Galactic Republic. Remember them? You know, the ones who put Palpatine in power and let him remain there? Palpatine, the Sith Lord, the one really committing treason and murder. Ironic. Anyway, Ahsoka was framed and almost put to death. The whole time, the Jedi Council sat back and watched. Popcorn in hand, they looked like they were at the premiere of Avatar. They didn't really step in to take care of their own, and the only one to believe that Ahsoka was innocent was her own master, Anakin Skywalker. Anakin Skywalker, to be seduced by the dark side and join Palpatine in his conquest. But it was only this trial of Ahsoka Tano that helped inch him into the loving arms of Papa Palpatine. Okay, and before I go on with the Ahsoka Tano, the Magnificent, a quick word from a guy who needs no introduction but gets one anyway. Me. Hit the subscribe button. Give the video a big stupid thumbs up. I'm on a voyage to hit 50,000 subscribers and I'd like you all to be a part of that journey. I know every freaking YouTube channel asks for your subscription, but mine's special. Why? Because it's freaking Star Wars, baby. And I absolutely promise to deliver on my word. With me, you'll get the best Star Wars content YouTube has to offer. And I'll deliver it in a way that's fun and engaging. And it's all original content. No rehashes of what other channels talk about. If you're looking for someone to bore you to sleep, I'm not that guy. But if you want to have fun and party like the Cantina Band finally signed a record contract, welcome home. Let's get back to the glory that is Ahsoka Tano. Alrighty then, Anakin found the real conspirator and drug her ass into the courtroom to confess her sins before the almighty Tarkin, which she did, and Ahsoka was released. Once back in the council chamber, she was told that this must have been her trial, in a figurative sense, I guess, and that she was welcome to rejoin the Order. Way to cover your ass, Yoda. Yeah, after they were going to let her be executed. She respectfully declined in a tearful moment with her now former master. I'm sure Anakin was thinking... They'll never grant me the rank of master now. I'm sure most of you know this backstory, but there are those who haven't watched The Clone Wars or any of the other animated stuff and could probably use a bit of understanding in what I'm talking about. The way the Jedi Council turned their backs on Ahsoka Tano made her turn her back on them and find gainful employment elsewhere. Pure at heart, Ahsoka was more of a Jedi than most on the Council, except this guy. <laughs> laugh. It's funny. 
After leaving the Jedi Order, Ahsoka finds various work in the lower levels of Coruscant as a type of sweaty mechanic. She then teams up with Bo-Katan Kreese to help liberate Mandalore and the aptly named Mandalorians from the rule of Maul, formerly Darth Maul. Yeah, he's still alive at this point. For the rest of her appearances in the Clone Wars and Star Wars animated series Rebels, Ahsoka denies being a Jedi when confronted with it. She says it to Maul, formerly Darth Maul, and she says it to Darth Vader, formerly Anakin Skywalker. To her, it's a huge deal that they stop calling her a Jedi, and she acts upon her own set of ethical and moral codes which don't include the occupation of worlds nor an entire galactic war to stop free citizens from becoming sovereign. Yeah, that's what the separatists were. They just wanted to be sovereign. But we see a change to this denial in her appearance in The Mandalorian. In the episode prior to Ahsoka's appearance in The Mandalorian, Din Djarin helps Bo-Katan crease. In return, she is to point him in the direction of a Jedi, pointing here and there, who will be able to train Grogu as a Jedi. Din Djarin says specifically, where can I find a Jedi? Bo-Katan then tells him where to find Ahsoka on the planet of Corvus. Before we see her face, we hear the magistrate tell Ahsoka Tano, show yourself, Jedi. And there's denial. In the past, Ahsoka would have yelled from behind a tree, I am no Jedi, but she didn't. Okay, who would really give away their position when stealth is a huge factor in her victory in this point. Okay, the way it was shown was slow and deliberate. The writers could have just had the magistrate say, show yourself, and leave it at that. But no, Jedi was added after a short pause, drawing attention to the word Jedi. True, this is the spoken in the moment of battle, and Ahsoka is trying to make a point. Why deny something to someone of little significance? I'll circle back to this. After this moment, when Din Djarin is talking to Ahsoka about training Grogu as a Jedi, Ahsoka says she can't train the baby man toddler. Not because she isn't a Jedi, but because she has seen what Grogu's attachments and feelings have done to fully trained Jedi Knights, a.k.a. Anakin Skywalker. Look, the whole premise of The Mandalorian Season 2 is getting Grogu to a Jedi, not a Force-sensitive in the light side an actual Jedi. It's been beat into our skulls since the Mandalorian season one, ancient enemies of the Mandalorians, Jedi. And even in this calm moment, Ahsoka Tano does not say she can't train Grogu as a Jedi because she isn't a Jedi. Okay, I understand a lot of these are just little minor issues and could be nothing at all. After all, Ahsoka left the Jedi Order as a teen. She then claimed not to be a Jedi into her 30s. But the Ahsoka series trailer tells us something different. See that? Uh-huh. It's right there in the trailer. I don't want to beat a dead horse on this. Wait, who would beat a dead horse? That's disgusting. Seriously, sounds like the makings of a serial killer. Take that, dead horse. You deserve to be beaten, stupid dead horse. Anyway, I don't want to go too much into the argument of whether Ahsoka is a Jedi again. Instead, let's talk about how she may have become a Jedi, if she is one at all. Let's go back to Anakin Skywalker. His master was Obi-Wan Kenobi, probably the most exemplary of the Jedi Knights and Masters, following the rules of the Jedi Order like a good boy. Obi-Wan has become so much more than an old man on shaky feet in the desert. But before he was this shining example of how good Jedi follow orders, he was a Padawan himself. During the Battle of Naboo, Obi-Wan Kenobi watched as his master was cut down in front of him. Okay, stab down between the chest and abdomen is where the red blade of Darth Maul's lightsaber made Obi-Wan Kenobi scream, No! Just as Luke Skywalker had when Obi-Wan was cut down by Darth Vader. Ironic. Back to the story. Once Qui-Gon was down on the ground, Obi-Wan Kenobi leapt out and defeated Maul. Supposedly the first Sith Lord to have been seen by a Jedi in over a thousand years. I don't buy that though. Caddy Mundi was a shady dude. Anyways, the result of Obi-Wan Kenobi's duel with Maul facing adversity and prevailing, all while dealing with the emotional trauma of watching his master fall, culminated into Obi-Wan Kenobi's Jedi trials and his advancement to the rank of Jedi Knight. On top of which, he got his own Padawan in the form of a too old for training 
Anakin Skywalker. So the fight between Darth Maul and Obi-Wan was Obi-Wan's trial. Fast forward and Obi-Wan Kenobi's own Padawan has a Padawan of his own, Ahsoka Tano. The Jedi tried playing off her trial and near execution as her own Jedi trials, but that's a pretty crappy way of inducting someone into a hypocritical religious order, and Ahsoka knew it. Anakin even knew it. But by the end of the Clone Wars, actually the very end of the Clone Wars, Ahsoka was dueling with whom? Yep, Maul, formerly Darth Maul. She defeated him in a true de Jedi fashion. It seems in order to become a Jedi, you have to be able to beat up Maul. Poor guy. Hey Luke, if you want to become a Jedi Knight, here's this guy called Maul. Beat him up and the rank is yours. So if the murder-slash-treason trial that ended in Ahsoka's favor wasn't really the trial to become a Jedi, could her duel with Maul be seen as her Jedi trial? She won. And there was plenty going on around to distract her, but she was still victorious. Had the Jedi Council been involved or invited to watch, or if Ahsoka had acknowledged that she was returning to the Jedi ways, perhaps, but she told the Council, you know, the Almighty Council, the one who helped Palpatine rise through the ranks, that she it was just a citizen, not as a Jedi, not yet. Did you catch that? Not yet. There's still hope that she will, I guess. So she is not a Jedi at the end of the Clone Wars, but we knew this because of her denial years later against Darth Vader. Flash forward to Star Wars Rebels. Ahsoka is defending Kanan and Ezra from Darth Vader. She knows the guy. He's her old master, Anakin Skywalker. At least he used to be. But when Vader tells Ahsoka that revenge isn't the Jedi way, she replies, I am no Jedi. Okay, so we know she doesn't consider herself a Jedi at this point. I mean, that's a long time between the Clone Wars and Rebels. If she doesn't consider herself a Jedi now, will she ever? Maybe, maybe not. But what about her trials? How could she be a Jedi without a council to say for sure? Do we know for sure that Ahsoka never ran into Obi-Wan Kenobi just before A New Hope? What about Yoda on Dagobah? We don't know. We can assume she may have. I mean, Ezra Bridger found Obi-Wan and he was nowhere near as strong as Ahsoka. But what about her trials? I mean, she survived the wrongful accusations of the Republic and being framed by that bitch Barisafi. That could have been her Jedi trial, as the Council suggested. But why would they offer her the Padawan decor in return for her returning to the Jedi Order? Okay, what about her fight and victory against Maul? Could that have been her trial? It worked for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Want to become a Jedi? Beat up on poor Maul. But she denies being a Jedi even after this. That leaves us one thing. Her fight with Darth Vader. Her duel, Master versus Padawan. Nothing would be more trying than a situation like that. Other than Obi-Wan being forced to kick Anakin's ass on Mustafar, that would suck too. But Ahsoka fighting Vader or Anakin Skywalker would be Jedi trial worthy and, if victorious, she could be put into the Hall of Fame in the Jedi Order. But she wasn't victorious in a physical sense. She lost the battle. In fact, if it weren't for Ezra Bridger, Ahsoka Tano would have died by Darth Vader's blade on Malachor. She would have remained a relic there, just as the countless Jedi and Sith that remained frozen in time. Yes, physically she lost the fight against Darth Vader. Anakin was more powerful Jedi than Ahsoka, so it stands to reason that Darth Vader would be more powerful than Ahsoka as well. Talk about a circle being complete. By this point, Anakin had fought with his own master and his own apprentice. What's next? Torture one of his kids? Cut off his kid's hand? Eh, eh, that should round things out a bit more. I mean, he did choke his wife. I guess he thought she'd be into it. I don't know. She wasn't so much. The fact that Ahsoka lost the physical fight with Darth Vader doesn't mean she would have failed the trial either. No, she could have still passed if we look at it in another way. Ahsoka had to face her former master, a man she highly respected and could ev have even loved as a brother to a degree. To find that Anakin had joined the dark side and became a Sith would be a hard pill for Ahsoka to swallow. Remember, she even denied it and tried to fight it, to battle his new alter ego and lose, and still come out with the same moral code and bond with the light side of the Force would have been a big-time win. 
which is exactly what Ahsoka Tano did. She faced him, fought him, tried to bring him back to the light, and prepared herself to die while trying. To me, that's more Jedi than most on the council would have done. Yoda just wanted him killed and done with. In the moment of fighting Darth Vader, Ahsoka does tell him, I am no Jedi, but directly following this confrontation, she very well could have been, and we haven't seen her deny it after this point as of yet. That could change, but I do acknowledge that Ahsoka could very well not be a Jedi, nor would she want to be after what the Jedi put her and her master through during the Clone Wars. But this is a new era, an era where Luke Skywalker is naive, I mean, pure at heart, and how amazing would it have been to have Ahsoka Tano either knight the son of her former master or be knighted by the son of her former master. But who's to say she didn't meet Luke Skywalker sometime after the fall of the Empire and teach him a few things about what it meant to be an actual Jedi per her code, without the hypocrisy. Helping Luke Skywalker form a new Jedi Order based on the Force and not personal gains. Also teaching him that involving himself in galactic politics was one of the catalysts for the downfall of the Jedi Order of Old. Who's also to say that Luke Skywalker didn't help Ahsoka Tano renew her faith in what the Jedi Order could be and together they started the new Jedi Academy. Who do we see her at the Academy under construction with in the Book of Boba Fett? Luke Skywalker. And in The Last Jedi, Luke knows an awful lot about the reasons for the fall of the Jedi Order. Who's to say Ahsoka didn't tell him about it? I know it's a stretch to think these things. One of the appeals of Ahsoka Tano is she goes her own way. She isn't bound to dogma and rules. She carries the light side of the force by choice, not by obligation or creed. She helps others because she wants to, not because she has to. And as a side note, maybe part of her gets a little pissed off that Luke Skywalker becomes a Jedi after 18 months of training, and she spent most of her younger life trying to reach that brass ring. Doubt it. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Pissed off and jealousy is of the devil. Blah, 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 blah. If you believe in that sort of thing. So I ask again, is Ahsoka Tano a Jedi in the Mandalorian timeline? If you watch the Ahsoka series teaser, then it's a resounding yes. However, teasers and trailers are often misleading. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. I do try to read them all and I try to reply to as many as I can. Told you I'm different and special. And before I give my heartfelt goodbye, another word from our sponsor, me. Hit the subscribe button and give the video a like. I'm really trying to hit 50,000 subscribers, and I'd like you all to be a part of the next phase of this channel. The YouTube algorithm is more difficult than trying to figure out why Star Wars takes the heads of Earth creatures and slaps them on human bodies. But together, we can conquer this YouTube algorithm. Thank you all for hanging out with me today. Until the next video, this is Gerald, a Star Wars fanatic, wishing you all great health and happiness, and peace. Thank you all for watching, and remember, this is the way, and positivity in the Star Wars community should be the only way.